hello and welcome to the Mindful Making video podcast. Mindful Making, on this channel we talk about yarn, we talk about knitting and we talk about the joy and the sort of calming effect of making with our hands. Uh, my name is Jane and I'm coming to you from Hornsby Heights, a small suburb north of Sydney and close to Hornsby. But before we start, I just want to acknowledge country. I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that I'm coming to you from today. I am on Darug Kurungai land. I pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. And through this greeting, I hope to contribute to bringing the honour and the respect that the first people of Australia uh, deserves. As I said, Mindful Making is a channel about knitting and um, I will talk about um, ongoing project and also a bit about finished objects. And um, when, if you saw the last episode, number 41, so this is number 42 episode, uh, I talked about um, planning for a holiday visit to Denmark. Uh, it was an amazing holiday and um, I have taken a lot of footage that I want to put together uh, for you and also talk all about uh, knitting, meeting up with knitting friends and family, um, visiting yarn stores and everything that I've purchased. But I thought that um, I would do that in a separate episode and then dedicate this video to the release of my latest design, which is the tea that I'm wearing. This is the Gominot tea. The pattern is planned for release uh, 3rd of August, so it might just be around when you watch this video. You can find me as Mindful Making on Instagram, on my website, which is called mindfulmaking.com.au, on Ravelry, I'm Mindful Making AU. And also, I just want to take this opportunity to welcome um, new viewers who have joined us since the last episode. It's so great to have you here and I'm truly honoured that you have chosen to spend this time with me. For returning viewers, welcome back. It's also so lovely to have you here. And I just want to say a huge thank you for uh, to those of you who put in the time and the effort to put comments um, to the videos, it just makes it all worth it. And I love reading through them and I love commenting and I love hearing about your views. And um, it just it's, it's that positive boost of energy. So uh, let's talk about gum nut tea. First of all, uh, just a short rundown of um, the construction and the design uh, and then a bit about the gum nut and why it's called the gum nut tea. So it is, this top is uh, knitted in the round, top down with a round yoke uh, construction and then split for sleeves and just straight down. Um, the neck is, or the back is raised just to get, a, and, and just to get the fit and the top to sit well on the shoulder so it doesn't fall back too much. And then um, it's basically a stockinette um, body and then this color work up here on the yoke. So these knobs is what reminded me of gum nuts. And these, so this is a, um, yeah. <laughs> after I've been in Denmark, I'm, my, my brain is working in Danish. Um, 
So it will take a few weeks or a few months before I'm back into just English all the time. But anyway, um, so it's a slip stitch pattern. I have used two strands of yarn, two colors that I have then mixed. So here it's a single color and then a one strand of each and then the second color here. There is a ribbing at the neck and also then I've repeated this little knobs here on the sleeves just before the ribbing. I Let me just try to stand up uh, and you can see the body. Let's see if that works. So it's not too long. Whoop. Yeah. Not very pretty. I will put insert a few pictures so uh, you can see it in um, sort of um, full height and uh, on the body. Uh, about 10 centimeters of positive ease, uh, very light, great to wear. And as I said, well, it is a, you know, I've put it as a summer top, but it could as well be a layering, layering piece for spring or autumn. The yarn that I have used, and there's only this much left of the main yarn, and this is a blend of merino and bamboo. It is from Carola uh, Down Under who has dyed it with natural dyes. So these are, I have to look at my papers, turmeric, cinera leaves and black beans and on a natural base. It is 80% superwash merino and 20% bamboo. So it is light and then it also have a bit of weight so it drapes beautifully. The two colors in the color work or in the knobs or in the gum knots is this one from Holtzdan. Uh, this color is called cinnamon. It is a light fingering weight. And then the second yarn is this color. And it is also from Holtzdan and it's called Titicaca, a 100% um, pure, uh, well, <laughs> 100% alpaca and uh, the color name is brown so these two together the main yarn is a fingering weight as well it's a 400 meter per one 100 grams the color work that is where you can start to play around and look in your stash if you have any leftover yarns and you can mix and match. You can um, have multicolored throughout. You could have a fade like I have, or you could have a single color as well. In the pattern, I have stated uh, holding two strands together. That is if you your contrast color is of a fingering weight or lighter. If you, uh, if you choose a sport weight or a DK weight, it might be enough with just one strand. What is important though, is that these knobs, um, oh, that is what I think is important. That is the feature of, of the design is that they appear and sort of pop. It is worked on a four millimeter needle, which is a US six and a 3.5 millimeter are at the ribbing. Also, which you might not be able to see, I have repeated the, uh, the knobs down here on the, on the hem. The testers have done their magic and the versions that have come out of, the versions of the gum nut tea that's come out of that is just spectacular. And if you want to see those different versions, um, when the pattern is launched, you can go to the pattern page um, and see the linked project. So you can see a lot of how the testers have interpreted 
this color work section up here. They are multicolored, they are single colored. They are also one who's done it in the same, um, just in the main color. So then you just get this, this change of texture up here. That's beautiful too. So plenty, that's where you can, you know, be creative, look what you have, what works with the main uh, yarn. I have used two skeins for this size, which is size number three, and the pattern uh, is graded for nine sizes from a finished bust, bust measurement of 89 centimeters or 35 inches up to 150 centimeters, which is 59 inches. So that will be uh, up there for you, either just it, it is already there or it's about to be released. So 3rd of August is the plan. Um, so I hope you will um, be interested and uh, I would love to see your how you uh, design your own tea. If you are a subscriber to the mailing list on the mindfulmaking.com.au website, look out for an email with a coupon code to get um, a bit of discount on the pattern. That is my way of saying thank you for your loyalty and um, make use of that and you can also find the, the pattern. It will be available in English and in Danish on um, my website and also on Ravelry at Mindfulmaking AU. AU. Ah, I can't speak. I think too much. Uh, I can't speak. Anyway, it is out there. It is released and it's a joy to bring you uh, this tea, um, this top. The summer top, I have worn it quite a bit and uh, I think the bamboo just makes it both warm but also light so it, it brings a bit of coolness to the merino so I've really enjoyed wearing it and um, I really, well when I say it myself, really like um, the, the patterning up here. Anyway Gumnut tea is out there and it's available and please use the hashtag gumnut tea and uh, tag mindful making so I can see your versions. It's so wonderful to see different take on, on your designs. So please do that. Coming back to the gum nuts. So a gum is a eucalyptus is the name of eucalyptus trees in Australia. It might be elsewhere as well, but they're for sure here in Australia. There are plenty of types of gums, you know, scribbly gum, white gum, red gum, and I don't know them all. Um, but they, their little fruit is like a knot. I found one on a, a tree just um, at my morning walk. So here is a gum nut. It is one of the bigger ones and in here when it blooms it has sort of flowers out here um, it is quite a hard nut but you could see sort of the inspiration of that gum nut into the little knobs of the tea. So there you go. Gum nuts. I wonder if you have those in your country as well. I know Denmark do, doesn't, but um, other countries might have them as well. Yeah, gum nut tea. I hope you'll enjoy. I just wanted to talk about what is on my needles. I have plenty of finished objects as well, but I would actually wait and present that and include them in the next little episode that I will um, create and record for you where we will talk about my trip to Denmark. 
So I thought I would just um, share with you what I'm working on and it's nothing new. You've seen it before. You've actually seen it several times. So it is the, um, this is the project that keeps on giving, giving. It is uh, the saddle shoulder jumper for my husband. I think in the last episode I had ripped the back up till here so I tried if I could finish it before I left for my holiday but I couldn't. The body was finished though and then when I came back I worked on the sleeves. It taken me a few goes or a few tries to get it right. Um, the saddle shoulder, let's see if you can so the saddle shoulder and then you pick up stitches and then you work the sleeve cap as short rows across here and I just had a f to have a few goes in just making it work but now the first sleeve is finished and I'm on to the second sleeve the cap is almost done and then it's just knitting down and then just a um, pick up and knit the neckline and it will be good to go. As you can see, it looks a bit sort of um, uneven. And that is because the yarn is like, you know, it is curled up because it's a reuse. I had knitted it a full jumper, all finished. And I have talked a lot about that. Um, the neckline didn't work, I ripped it all back, started over. But I am sure that the yarn will even out and it will be beautiful when I, when it's washed and blocked and um, then my husband will get his beautiful black, um, yeah, blue jumper that he has been waiting patiently for for a long time. The yarn is the uh, Holst Super Soft, which is a 100% wool. Initially, it had a lot of excess uh, color in it, so my hands got blue. But now that it has been washed one, once in a finished jumper, it, it doesn't bleed anymore. So my hands are good, uh, not tinted with blue. This color is called Vintage Heather. It is a beautiful, now it blows out on the camera, so you can't see the deep colors here. It's basically a, a dark navy blue and mixed with black. So it's, um, it's a very deep, beautiful colored yarn. Hopefully, when I record the next episode, this will be finished. Let's see. Let's see. I am working from Anne Butts' a a book, which is top-down sweaters, and it has stitch counts for different um, gauge gauges as well. So um, I'm using that, and it does take a bit of... Um, focus and concentration to um, to just follow the tables and finding the right figures and keeping track of where you are and I think maybe I was a bit tired after the long flight home so I didn't fully understand that sleeve cap thing so I had to go back but all, all good that is what I'm working on at the moment finally before I let you go for this will be a bit of a shorter episode um, I wanted to show you a few very plain yarn purchases and just one very exciting and well they're both exciting any yarn purchase is exciting but um, uh, these were from before I left for my trip the first purchase was inspired by Alexandra in, in at Fiberbound. So she had she had this video where she was at Lindcraft. They had 50% off all um, all yarn yarn. So she had a video when she was 
walking the aisles and picking out stuff. Maybe it was 50% Dutch earthworth craft supply, I can't remember. But I just got so inspired by that. So I bought black cotton yarn, plain uh, cotton, there is 100 gram in this one, eight ply, and I use these to knit up dishcloths that we use in our kitchen. And I actually just picked out a few that I have done, not in this yarn, but I have some sitting in my um, in my cupboard and all of them just need to have their ends woven in and they can go in the kitchen drawer. And uh, it's just a nice thing just to have at hand for, you know, small trips or even for sometimes when I walk, I just go walk around. I think actually these are knitted on morning walks and then when people passes by, I just whoop, hide the needles because it is a bit embarrassing and not very mindful, to be honest, to walk, listen to an audio book and knitting at the same time while walking. It's not one thing at a time. Anyway, sometimes that can get me out walking that I'm allowed or I can knit at the same time because maybe what I really want is just to sit and knit and then I could still knit while getting a bit of exercise. So that will be the purpose of 10 balls of black cotton yarn. They will turn into dishcloths at some stage. I also was tempted to buy another cotton yarn and I have a thing for green at the moment. So I bought this four ply yarn, which is a, well, they say it's crochet, knitting cotton four ply. Uh, the color is olive. It is a bit, um, it is, the color is a bit boring. It's a bit flat. But I thought maybe a nice light summer tea would, this would be suitable for that. So four of these and 10 of these were then $43, which is uh, in Danish, uh, and in US, it will probably be 35 or something. So I thought that was a good deal. And uh, then I uh, have <laughs> well, even more yarn in my stash. Don't get me started. But anyway, it's good. It's my collection. It's fine. So that is cotton. And then uh, inspired by Pia of 50 Fabulous, the 50 Fabulous podcast. She has knitted uh, the Shifty Sweater by Andrea Murray. And uh, she had found a, um, a yarn alternative that isn't as pricey as the Spencerville yarns. Uh, I was hooked. So I have bought these two massive balls of yarn. So this is, is bought at a company called By Kielerik. It's a Danish, she's a Danish yarn dyer and then she imports this Latvian wool. It is called lat wool. And she, she, whatever she has in her shop, that's what she has and the colors will differ. So it is 70% wool and 30 um, Latvian wool, which is a bit uh, sort of coarse, and then 30% merino. So it, ha it, it has some bites to it, this wool. This will be the main uh, color. And then I will have 
this yellow pink orange thing as the um, contrast color. It's a bit out there for me, don't you think? Maybe I should have chosen something a light gray <laughs> sitting here instead. Oh, but it's beautiful. So they have these, um, the color changes are very long on this yarn. And this one is, um, it's, got, it's dif difficult with the dark yarns. So it's green, brown, blue, teal. This is, this is a pretty, I like this one better than this one, but I think together they might work really well. I don't know when I will knit it. Someday, one day, someday. If only there were more hours in the day. But anyway, this was my update in this short video, a celebration of the release of the Gumnut Tea. I hope you will, um, that you will like it and I hope that you will knit it. And I hope that you will share your versions of this summer top. I'm looking very much forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye bye.